Hi everybody, this is a video about whether ozone has a negative impact on the microbiome of the body. Uh, just before jumping into the video, just a quick reminder that nothing that I'm saying in my videos should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. Um, sorry in advance, my voice is a little bit raspy today, so I um, hope it doesn't uh, interfere with the uh, quality of the sound too, too much for you. Uh, so somebody posted this question on one of my old videos, actually. Um, it was a video entitled, What is the Role of Ozone Therapy in Chronic Infections? Um, fantastic video, riveting. Um, so uh, feel free to check that out if you want to see what the uh, basis for this uh, question came from. But um, the uh, question says, um, I'm using ozone for sinusitis with nasal insufflation. So I like putting ozone into the sinuses. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this person is doing specifically. Um, a lot of folks, myself included, when we recommend ozone into the sinuses as an insufflation, the ozone's percolated through um, olive oil or some other type of oil first um, to create a byproduct called an ozonide. Um, directly inhaling ozone can be very toxic to the, well, it is very toxic to the airways very, very well established in the medical literature, very bad to breathe in straight ozone, but breathing in um, an ozonide as a byproduct does not seem to be harmful to the airways as best we can tell. So just uh, saying that background for some, uh, for some context. So it further says, I'm wondering, do I have any information about how ozone and its various applications might affect the body's microbiome systems? Uh, this would seem to be a very important consideration since it has proclivity, good word, love that word proclivity, uh, to destroy different types of bacteria. I've heard that it is predominantly anaerobic bacteria that ozone targets, but would appreciate hearing your take on this subject since the ozone and some applications interfaces with microbiome systems that are by their nature delicate. So it's a really good question um, and really a question that we should ask, I think, at any point that we're bringing something foreign into the body, you know, what impact might it have on, uh, like you or maybe targeting something with it, but what other types of impacts might that have? Um, and where ozone, you know, myself and others like talk about how it can be so useful for treating infections because it really can be, um, well, could it be maybe good at killing off good microbes as well? Um, we certainly know that antibiotics can have a negative impact, not all antibiotics, but the majority of antibiotics can potentially have a negative impact on the healthy gut microbiome. Um, so maybe natural antimicrobials could too. Um, I think I've posted another video um, I don't know how long ago or what the video was called, but I think I have posted before about um, my experience with using um, systemic antimicrobials for Lyme co-infections or even gut antimicrobials going after SIBO, LIBO, yeast, parasites, things like that. And in some cases, patients have been on those herbs for are on those herbs for an extended period of time, like months and months and months, sometimes years and in, in, in you know, relatively rare cases. And um, I've, I've not seen negative impacts on the gut microbiome. And I believe I've delved into that in some, into another video or in another video before. But um, with ozone, um, what, what I can say um, in, in response to this question is that um, according to the research literature, which I've scoured because I teach an annual ozone therapy certification course for, course for clinicians, so every year I do an annual review of all the um, published literature that relates to, you know, human health um, in, in uh, with respect to ozone. Um, so I've not yet seen a study that actually you know, looks at answering this question, the impact of say rectal insufflations or sinus insufflations of ozone having an impact on the microbiome in those areas. So I haven't seen any studies. I mean, it doesn't mean they don't exist and I just miss them, but I, I haven't seen any state and I've, I've actively looked to stay on top of the uh, cutting edge uh, research on ozone therapy. Um, but what I can say from uh, the research literature is that the um, small number of studies that have looked at using uh, sinus insufflations, nasal insufflations, um, have not reported that I've seen any negative consequences or like that it's induced sinusitis or something that might suggest that the microbiome was disturbed and leaving it as a kind of sitting duck for some other infection to waltz in. And um, at the same time, um, there are uh, of all the uh, quite a few human clinical trials looking at rectal insufflations of ozone, um, they haven't reported side effects of you know what would look like a, kind of an antibiotic associated diarrhea just without the antibiotics. So they haven't reported you know cases of folks having diarrhea or resultant of digestive upset as a result of having series of ozone rectal insufflations. A lot of the studies, if memory serves, look at usually a series of maybe twenty to thirty um, rectal insufflations. So it's not like you know doing it for months and months and months, um, but it's it's quite a number of insufflations. And while like there can be acute side effects of abdominal cramping and sometimes like you know, an urgent bowel movement or sometimes diarrhea immediately following a rectal insufflation, just the body kind of purging, um, the, you know, the, the ozone kind of stimulates the um, bowels to empty. Um, in some cases, it doesn't, I've not seen any studies saying that, oh, there is a lingering side effect of 
you know, um, patient was having diarrhea multiple times a day, or that they, they developed, you know, kind of chronic digestive issues or subacute digestive issues following their um, course of rectal insufflation of ozone. So from the research literature, they haven't, you know, I, I don't believe any studies have specifically looked at, you know, impact on the microbiome or specific side effects like that, that they were kind of trying to find per se, but um, none that I'm aware of were reported in the, you know, quite a few human studies that have been done. Uh, what I can further say from my own clinical experience is that I, I've recommended sinus um, ozonide inhal insufflation slash inhalation um, to many patients over the years. Uh, I've recommended rectal insufflation to quite a few patients, not nearly as many as I've recommended say, intravenous ozone or ozone injections or things like that. But uh, from the from my own clinical experience, um, patients have not reported um, side effects from those treatments that would suggest that the microbiome is being disrupted. I actually have one patient who has used, um, was using daily rectal insufflations, like the, the person bought their own um, ozone generator, was doing these treatments at home, um, and and there's you know, precedent for that. Like there are some um, ozone experts out there who you know, talk about doing this for like inflammatory bowel disease and things like that. This patient actually has a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease, and the daily rectal insufflations were first of all, very, very helpful. It's one of the only things the patient was able to tolerate. It made a huge, huge difference um, in their overall inflammatory bowel disease. And um, there, were, there were certainly no um, obvious negatives from doing it. There were very obvious positives, uh, but it didn't seem like the patient somehow you know, wiped out their microbiome or anything like that. And I feel like we're you know, using ozone daily for that long period of time. Like There aren't that many folks out there who, who do that, to my understanding. So I think that's valuable information that it does not seem to have a negative impact on the microbiome. Um, whether it's because it's pr predominantly targeting anaerobes or not, I'm, I'm not really sure. To be honest, I haven't really paid attention to um, the uh, sort of classification of the various bacteria that ozone's been shown in, in vitro studies at least to kill effectively have a laundry list of those bacteria I haven't I didn't really pay attention to whether the most anaerobic or aerobic or um, you know selective um, anaerobes or whatever it is but uh, that's, that's a good theory and maybe that's why I'm, I'm not 100% sure I haven't really looked into that um, so I hope that that answered the question quite a quite a long-winded answer my, my goodness seven minute long video here um, but I hope that answered the question uh, if there's any further questions on this topic or anything else just post in the comment section below and if you yourself have used um, ozone inhalations or insufflations or really ozone in any way. If you feel so inclined, please feel free to post in the comment section below just letting us know um, how did the ozone work for you? Was it helpful or not helpful? Did it cause side effects? Did ozone wipe out your microbiome? I really hope it didn't. Um, but uh, if, if it did, um, you know, and if you're still comfortable sharing, let us know because I'll say, well, I've never seen that, but there was this one person on my YouTube channel or Instagram uh, page or whatever that uh, indicated that there was an issue. So uh, again, thank you for the question and I will leave it there for now.